This is Prime 7 News at 6.30 with Daniel Gibson. Tonight, terror raid in regional New South Wales. One man accused of trying to help Islamic State. A school cleaner viciously bashed by thieves with a bat on his way to work. Oscars blunder. Find out who gave the wrong envelope to the awards presenters. And just in the nick of time for a hunter man and his lotto ticket. Good evening. A man accused of doing high-tech research to help arm Islamic State with long-range missiles has been arrested in regional New South Wales. Federal police raided his property at Young today and uncovered an operation described as extremely disturbing. The Prime Minister announced the arrest of the 42-year-old electrician but stressed there was no plan for an attack on home soil. In Sleepy Young, population less than 8,000, Haisam Zahab was neither out of sight nor out of mind of counter-terrorism police. And tonight, Haisam Zahab is on his way to the Juni Correctional Centre near Wagga Wagga. Once processed, he's likely to end up in Goulburn Supermax Prison, where terror suspects are held. Well, they were ringleaders of the Brothers for Life gang, responsible for terrorising southwest Sydney during a violent turf war. Their criminal history is long. But tonight, for the first time, the Kwame brothers are convicted murderers, guilty of organising the contract killing of a standover man in front of his wife and children. The end of the line for the Kwame brothers. The guilt of both Farhad Kwame and Mumtaz Kwame on the charge of murder has been established. Blame it on the bean counters is the mantra coming out of the Academy Awards tonight. Accountancy firm PricewaterhouseCoopers has admitted bungling the result for best picture at the Oscars. But you see, that wasn't the only blunder. The ceremony wrongly killed off a Sydney film producer too. If ever the Oscar crowd oh, let's go in. Yeah, needed an extra stiff drink at the after parties, it was this year. And the Academy Award. After the most heavily produced show on earth. For best picture. Got it oh so wrong. Coming up, some tearful evidence at public hearings into the historical sexual abuse of child migrants sent to Australia. And former Premier Mike Baird embraces his new role in the banking world. Premier Mike Baird has a new job in his old profession. Less than six weeks after quitting politics, he's joining the National Australia Bank on what's rumoured to be a $2 million salary. Mike Baird's coming back to banking. 17 years uh, career in financial services. I took time out to spend 10 years in public life. It's over a month since he quit as Premier to spend more time with his family and Mr Baird says his new role will still give him time to do that. Still to come, the straight-talking spin doctor drafted in to help the Aussie cricketers and Shark Attack, the NRL defending champs, gear up for their first game this season, hoping for a Premiership repeat. This sport report brought to you by TAB. Love a bet on your TAB app at tab.com.au or at your local. tonight with some breaking news on Eels forward Kenny Edwards. He's considering his future outside the NRL faced with the possibility of a $100,000 fine and a ban for up to half of the 2017 season. Edwards of course pleaded guilty to common assault in court yesterday for pouring water on his former partner in December. He's avoided a conviction but has been suspended indefinitely by Parramatta. It's just 48 hours before the season begins and the defending champs are already being written off as title contenders. But just as predictably, the Sharks captain Paul Gallen is keen to keep the critics quiet. Critics are tearing the Sharks to shreds. It's our job now um, to go out there and prove everyone wrong. Cronulla's premiership defence begins without two of their most influential players. Up next, our first look at Adele on stage in Australia. Guy Fenton's back with all your weather details and Megan, oh, you've done it again, Megan. If it is indeed Megan, you're taking a beautiful shot in Sydney.
Good evening, Guy Fenton here with your national weather. It was our last day of summer today. We're still seeing some summery conditions around the south of New South Wales and across Victoria too. A high pressure ridge is maintaining settled conditions around the southeast of the country. Bit of a different story though for the New, Sp New South Wales coast at the moment. Our summer is continuing to be washed out by some very heavy downpours around the mid north coast. Now a trough and onshore winds are combining to bring the wet and stormy conditions. As the week goes on though, we are, are going to see the wet weather start to move more south and we'll see a chance of some showers and storms around the northeast and central parts of New South Wales as well. So tomorrow, our first day of autumn, temperatures are looking pretty similar today across the state. Still some sunshine and warmth around Wagga and Condoblin, tops of 34 there and sunny. A very slight chance of a shower around Tamworth and Moree, but we could see a possible storm in the afternoon and evening. For the coast, we could see up to 10 to 15 millimetres around Coffs Harbour and up to Lismore, but quite lighter compared to the 52 millimetres we saw in Lismore last night. Showers are going to get a bit heavier uh, for Sydney tomorrow, up to 25 millimetres possible there and a top of 26 degrees for you. For Melbourne, another pretty warm day, a uh, top of uh, 32 degrees and it should be sunny in Melbourne. For Brisbane, we could see 15 millimetres in the way of rain. Still a pretty warm day for you, a top of 29. Now, a quick check of Thursday. We are still seeing some showers along the coast, starting to become a bit lighter, though, compared to the start of this week. And, Daniel, some showers are looking to persist for most of the New South Wales coast right over the weekend as well. Thanks for letting us know. Good on you, Guy. Well, despite the noise, there were very few complaints in Perth as Adele took over the main stadium last night to rehearse ahead of her first concert in Australia. No fans allowed inside, but the neighbours got a free preview and our chopper got to see the impressive stage as well. Adele will be on the other side of the country from next week. And that's your news for this Tuesday, the last day of February and indeed summer. Thanks so much again for your company. I'm Daniel Gibson. Tell us again. Have a great night. Bye for now.